Hey guys, Shutters and Triggers here, um, coming at you with another review um, of a camera. Not a gun, not a knife, nothing like that. This time it's something that relates to the shutters in my channel name. But um, I'm going to talk about and review for you the Mamiya RB67 Pro SD. Um, what RB stands for is rotating back. If you look at the camera here, the film back rotates. Um, the camera takes a 6x7 centimeter negative, so that allows you to switch between portrait and landscape orientation. But I'll talk more about that in a bit. Um, the Mamiya RB line was um, first introduced in the 70s. And then in 1974, they updated it with the Pro S. You can see how it says Pro SD on the side of my camera there. They updated it with the Pro S version in 1974. The updates to the Pro S version were that it introduced a double exposure interlock, so you couldn't shoot more than one exposure per negative unless you selected a setting to do so. And then it, um, it introduced a portrait versus landscape indicator in the viewfinder, so you could see when you're looking through the viewfinder what orientation the back is at. Um, that has proven to be very valuable for me. Um, in the 90s, they updated the, the, the line to the Pro SD model, and really the major update for the Pro SD model was a um, different bayonet mount to um, accept K and L lenses. K, not K and L, but K L lenses. Um, lenses for these cameras come in three flavors. You have the original lenses, which can be picked up for um, next to nothing, really. You can get the original lenses for um, $50, $60, $70. Then they have the, um, and th th those go by the moniker C-Core, S-E-K-O-R. And then they have the C-Core C lenses, which stand for coated. Um, if you're not familiar with the way that camera lens coatings work and stuff like that, um, if you look, let me pull my focus back here a little bit. If you see the reflection in the light there, you can see how it's multicolored. That means it's a coated lens. And what um, coatings on lenses will do is uh, when you're shooting color film, primarily it will allow uh, you to get a little bit better color saturation and contrast. Um, it will also reduce the amount of um, lens flare you can get. I know some people like to play with lens flare, and that's really cool, but from time to time you just don't want it, especially um, when you're shooting in some backlit conditions and stuff like that, or if you have studio strobes a little close to the side of your viewfinder. But um, those are the three lenses. This is a C-Core C. I have no problem with the C lenses. The K&L lenses are the newest, but um, I have read online, I don't have personal experience, but I have read online that the differences are pretty minimal. So um, what I'm gonna do for you right now is I'm gonna go over the functions of the camera. I'm gonna show you how it works, and then I'm gonna break this camera down into its different parts so you can see how it goes together. And then um, I'll kind of talk about practical applications for the camera. Um, as I roll, and I'll roll in some, some photographs that I've taken so you guys can see some examples. Um, so this is a waist level viewfinder camera. So what that means is this flips up and you can see your picture. You can see my, the reflector I'm using there, the gold reflector, but you see your picture in the viewfinder. Now, if you guys can see, let me get a pointer here. Um, if you guys can see in the viewfinder, you can see a red line right here that is going to indicate that you are in landscape orientation and um, the borders of your frame are going to go to the edge of the viewfinder and be cut off there. When I rotate this back to portrait, watch, they go away. See that? Red line, and as soon as I turn it, they go away. Portrait will be, um, your portrait orientation will be, whoa, will be shown by the dotted line on the side here. Um, it, I, I find it to be a really effective system to knowing when your, uh, like in, in, you know, what direction your back is turned for your camera. Um, I love using the waist level viewfinder. I should also show you if you've ever used a Hasselblad, this has a magnifier as well. You just, you flip, but there's a little, there's a little lever right here. You push it in and your, your magnifier, um, turns out. You can see that right there. So there's a little lever right there, that white lever, and you push that in and this flips up and then you can look through and really check your focus. Um, something else I should mention about these cameras is the film backs have, um, they have two different kinds of film backs. 
They have this, which is a motorized film back. These will be more expensive. I, find, I see these running about $200 or so. I think that for 200 bucks, it's worth every penny. And then they have the, the standard uh, mechanical film backs. And uh, the mechanical film backs, you can get a Pro S or a Pro SD model. Um, the Pro S models are going to have a crank on the back, so every time you shoot a picture, you'll have to cock the shutter here and then wind the film on the back. So it's going to be a two-step process to, to getting ready for the next picture that you take. Um, they can be found online for about $80, but um, the Pro SDs don't have... I feel like I'm jumping all over the place, but there's a light, um, a, a, a light seal in here. And the Pro S model light seals are kind of this foam that, that presses against the back of the camera and blocks light from this crack. The Pro SD models are actually made of metal and um, those seals can't deteriorate on you. Um, if you can get a Pro SD mechanical um, film back, I would recommend that or, uh, unless you want to get the motorized. I would recommend the motorized over any of them. But... Um, the Pro SD models also come in um, 645, 6 by 4.5 centimeter negatives, which um, I don't care for as much, but you can get those as well. Um, let's see. So to take a picture, your focus is going to be here on this knob. Check my focus here. There we go. Um, focus is going to be here. And as you can see, there's a bellows focus mechanism. What's nice about that over another camera that kind of works in this sort of class, like a Hasselblad, is that it allows you to get a lot closer to your subjects. Um, your minimum focus distance can be uh, really, really close, depending on what lens you have and, and, and stuff like that. Um, there is a chart on the side of the lens here that will talk about bellows um, compensation. If you're not familiar with bellows compensation, um, it just means that the farther your bellows is out, you need to add more light because you lose some brightness in this in this uh, in this distance but um, once you have your your uh, your focus locked in you would go about just taking your photograph boom just like that and then you cock your shutter and then if you have a mechanical back there'll be a lever here that you wind if not if you have a motorized back this will this will wind um, automatically um, as you saw, I took the dark slide out. The dark slide fits between these two white lines on the side of the back. And what that allows you, it won't fire with the dark slide in, but what that allows you to do is um, if you have more than one film back, you can remove it in between, um, in between rolls if you want to switch film types. Um, it is, that's done by just these two levers here. It works, if you're familiar with 4x5 film backs, it works in a very similar way to uh, like a graph lock back or something like that. Um, let me see. That's, a, that's the basic operation of the camera. Focus, your shutter is going to be right here. Right here. So once you have in focus, you hit that, you'll hear it go, cock your shutter, wind your film back. So it's, it's, unless you have a motorized back, I, I, I wouldn't recommend this for high... Uh, pace shooting but it can be done there i've seen people just blast through pictures this way but um to load film on the side of your film back there's going to be a tab that you push up and then there'll be one on the bottom that you push down that's going to pop this open and this comes out um what you'll do is you'll transfer let me You'll transfer your reel here to this side. These swing out. You put the bottom of your reel on here. I'll show you. You put the bottom of your reel on here, and then it, it actually it's kind of a thing. Like you gotta get the top lined up and then you swing it over just like that. And then you'll put your new roll here and you wrap the film so the black paper faces out around the front of the back to this side and then into your into your tab here. You'll put the tab in there. Um, then, once you have that, you'll wind your film back here until the black arrow on the on the roll of film is lined up with the red arrow on the bottom there. I don't know if you guys can see that. And then, once you have once you have it to that point, you'll just um, drop your film back or the the insert back into your film back and close it and shut those and you're good to go. With a motorized back then all you do is you press start 
and it'll wind. Um, if you have a mechanical back, you'll just you'll wind it until the one the one exposure comes up. Um, yeah. So okay, now I uh, let me field strip this camera for you at field strip, like like it was a Glock or something. But let me field strip it for you so you can see it in its various parts and kind of see how it goes together. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the lens. The lens um, is mounted here with a locking ring, so you're going to turn this locking ring and the lens will drop off. Oh, this is one of the most important parts of the whole camera. The, it, this is a leaf shutter. What that means, if you're not familiar, is that the shutter is in the lens itself. So, you can see it, you can see the shutter close there. Do you see that? And then it'll fire. What that does is that um, will allow you to sync if you're using studio strobes at any flash sync speed that you want. These will shoot up to a 400th of a second. So you'll be able to shoot the strobe up to a 400th of a second. So um, that's really awesome. This is a 90 millimeter. That's standard for 6.7. Um, the next step will be to remove the viewfinder. Now Mamiya offers prism viewfinders too, so you can look you can hold it at eye level and look straight in and you'll see you'll see through the lens. But to remove the viewfinder, you push this tab in and then you push this front plate um, over like that. And then it just lifts free. Um, the next thing you can do if you want, I'm not going to, but you can remove the uh, this um, your your uh, focusing screen here will lift. Oh, I'll take it out. It'll lift free as well, and you can see um, the uh, orientation indicators here are nothing more really than like a fiber optic bar, kind of like a, a fiber optic sight on a handgun. Um, the last two pieces are the film back, which I showed you how to get off earlier. Sorry guys, my camera cut out on me. Um, the last part we'll take off is the rotating back. There's a tab on the bottom here, and all you do is you flip that up, and the rotating back comes free. Um, what that will allow you to do is, I um, they make Polaroid backs for these cameras that the uh, won't that won't fit on the rotating back that have a back of their own. So. Um, being able to take that off will allow you to put a Polaroid back on. Now I want to show you really quick. I was talking about the foam light light seals. There's one that goes along here. This is in good. This one's in good condition. But um, if you're using the Pro SD, the Pro SD backs, that's not as much of a concern because it'll just it'll seal along these metal these metal edges here. So um, ultimately, what I would recommend this camera for is for somebody who's really conscious of image quality but um, is not necessarily uh, restricted by movement. Um, these cameras weigh about six pounds. Um, they're referred to as the boat anchor of studio photography. They are not uh, they are not an easy camera to use if you're in the field. Um, with that said, I have walked with this camera and shot with this camera um, with no with no problems whatsoever. Um, if that was something that you wanted to do, um, I I would say go for it, man. Like I don't think that you would that you're gonna have any problems with it. Um, these cameras were designed primarily to be high end, high output um, studio cameras where um, image quality is key. That's why the lenses are so big. It allows them to do a lot more with the glass and. Uh, you know, really focus on image quality. Um, the other thing about them is they are uh, built incredibly well. Um, they're not, the parts aren't just going to break down on you unless you drop them. Um, but I, I'm convinced that the, that this camera could probably even survive a, uh, a small drop. Um, so the other thing about them that I, that I'm really struck by, here's your flash sync, by the way, and you can mount a pocket wizard to this cold shoe. This is not a hot shoe. This is a cold shoe, but you can mount it here. So you mount that there, stretch a cord over here and you're set. Um, the other thing I will say about it that makes these things such a great camera is they were produced in such big quantities that you can get one for, I mean, you could get an entire kit, this entire kit for less than $500. I think you could probably pick one up 
for 400 bucks. Um, if you shop kehkeh.com, they have used kits on there, used parts, all kinds of stuff. If you need help putting something together, feel free to PM me. I can give you a hand. But for $400, you can't beat this for a medium format camera. I would recommend this to you over Hasselblad. I would recommend this to you over almost anything else. A Hasselblad kit's going to cost you a grand. A Mamiya 7 kit's going to cost you more than that. Um, I would. This, this is the camera that I, that I would recommend to you with. I would also recommend to you. I would also recommend that you try and get a hold of a motorized back instead of a mechanical one. But if you can't, the mechanical ones work great. It's just another step you have to remember. Um, I'm going to roll in a couple of pictures at this point. Uh, there's going to be... Um, a picture that I shot of a friend of mine's girlfriend, um, her name's Alyssa, and this was shot with a strobe to the camera right, and um, these are all shot with a 90mm lens, I should say, but um, this is a wide shot, the colors in it came in great, uh, you know, it's just a, it's an, it's an outdoor portrait, and then the next one will be a tighter headshot of a, um, of a friend of mine named Evan, and um, I'm going to roll in two black and whites, that'll be one of my, uh, one of my dog unfortunately, and then um, one of my wife that I shot just in my backyard doing a camera test. And I mean, these are great portraits. The depth of field you can get out of these lenses is incredible. The the contrast and the tonality and everything are just, are just amazing. So um, if you're looking, I mean, if you're a student, if you're looking for a medium format camera, if you just want to get into something that's going to look better than digital, look better than 35 millimeter, um, get one of these cameras. I would recommend it above, like I said, pretty much anything else. So um, if you guys have any questions, please PM me. Um, I'd be happy to help you guys piece together a Mamiya kit. Um, the one note that I should add on the end of this is they make two models. There's the Mamiya RB, as in boy, and then the Mamiya RZ, as in zebra. Um, the reason that I went with the Mamiya RB is because everything is mechanical. There's no battery that can die while you're out in the field. Um, the Mamiya RZ has an electronically controlled shutter. Um, it's a slightly more modern design. I believe that you can still buy them new. Um, I didn't want to go with that because if something breaks, your local camera repair shop can't fix it because it needs to be plugged in and reprogrammed and stuff like that. So, um... The Mamiya RZs are good. They're gonna rate. They're gonna cost you about twenty or thirty percent more than this would, but they're still a good camera. Um, I mean, they're a great camera. You can hook a digital backup to them if you have ten grand lying around. But uh, for all intensive purposes, I would suggest a Mamiya RB. Try and get a Pro SD if you can. You know then that it's only gonna be, you know, ten, twenty years old. It's not gonna be forty, fifty, sixty years old. So. Um, yeah, that's it. Mamiya RB, uh, Pro SD, Mamiya RB67, Pro SD, and um, this is Shutters and Triggers, signing off. Thanks, guys.